Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time As anyone can plainly see, we are living in the last moments before the return of Jesus Christ. America is in a spiritual battle between good and evil, as we read in Ephesians 6.12, where we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. It was just last week that we noticed that parts of the transgender movement seem to be getting militant and possibly dangerous. We did a whole segment about it on Thursday night. That segment was sparred by an NPR segment we had heard and never expected to hear. NPR has always, as a matter of editorial policy, completely opposed the civilian ownership of firearms, with the possible exception of maybe IRS agents. Yet here suddenly was that very same station, National Public Radio, positively urging trans people to buy guns, as many guns as possible, and if necessary, to use them. The world is dangerous, explained one trans gun owner. You have to be dangerous back. And that seems strange to us. Is the United States really a dangerous place for trans people? Well, West Baltimore is dangerous. You could easily get murdered there. But if you're trans in this country, obviously there are many downsides, but there do appear to be some benefits. It's a lot easier to get into Harvard, for example. It's definitely easier to get a job at Citibank or in the Biden White House. If you're transgender can so much as fly a kite, the Pentagon will happily make you an F-35 pilot just so Hollywood can make a movie about it. Identifying as trans, whatever, again, its downsides, does convey status in this country, which is why so many young people now do. Not a lot of 19-year-olds are pretending to be car mechanics or linemen for a regional power company in eastern Ohio, but plenty of college freshmen do pretend to be members of the opposite sex. And why wouldn't they? The people in charge despise working-class whites, but they venerate the trans community. People are just responding to incentives. It's rational in a way. But that does not explain the anger that we heard in that NPR segment. Why are some trans people so angry and why do they seem to be mad specifically at traditional Christians? We can't think of any trans person who's ever been murdered by a pastor. As far as we know, that has never happened. So it's not an actual threat of violence from Christians that's inspiring some trans people to buy AR-15s. No, it's, it's gotta be more fundamental than that, and it is. The trans movement is the mirror image of Christianity and therefore its natural enemy. In Christianity, the price of admission is admitting that you're not God. Christians openly concede that they have no real power over anything and for that matter, very little personal virtue. They will tell you to your face that they are sinful and helpless and basically absurd. They're not embarrassed about any of this. They brag about it. That saved a wretch like me goes the most famous Christian hymn ever written in English. The trans movement takes the opposite view. Trans ideology claims dominion over nature itself. We can change the identity we were born with, they will tell you with wild-eyed certainty. Christians can never agree with this statement because these are powers they believe God alone possesses. That unwillingness to agree, that failure to acknowledge a trans person's dominion over nature incites and enrages some in the trans community. People who believe they're God can't stand to be reminded that they're not. So Christianity and transgender orthodoxy are wholly incompatible theologies. They can never be reconciled. They are on a collision course with each other. One side is likely to draw blood before the other side. 
That's what we concluded last week. Yesterday morning, tragically, our fears were confirmed. A self-identified trans person called Audrey Hale committed mass murder at a Christian school in Nashville. Hale burst into a place called the Convent School and executed three nine-year-olds as well as three adults. Police have released body cam footage from the end of the massacre. We're showing you just a small part of it. You can see the rest online if you want. We're not going to show it because that's too awful and sad. But what was almost as sickening to see in a far more subtle and insidious way was the media coverage of yesterday's tragedy. Here's Terry Moran of ABC News, for example, suggesting that Christians were murdered in Tennessee because they infringed on the rights of transgendered people. Audrey Hale was a, identified herself as a transgender person. Uh, it, state of Tennessee earlier this month passed and the governor signed a bill that banned transgender medical care for minors as well as uh, a law that prohibited adult entertainment including male and female impersonators after a series of drag show controversies in that state. The state of Tennessee bans the sexual mutilation of children. Children get shot to death in a school. It's cause and effect. That's what ABC News is telling you. That's not far from justifying mass murder, but others took the next step. A group called the Trans Resistance Network said that the shooter's death was a complex tragedy that resulted from, quote, anti-trans bias. The Hershey Chocolate Company's new trans spokesman, meanwhile, someone called Faye Johnstone, posted messages after the shooting complaining about, quote, trans misogyny. In Canada, a taxpayer-funded trans rights organization put out a statement that ignored the murder of the children in Nashville entirely and instead claimed that there has been a, quote, exponential rise in anti-trans violence. That is a lie. It's a provable lie. And in fact, the opposite is true. We seem to be watching the rise of trans terrorism. The man who tried to murder Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh after the repeal of Roe v. Wade identified as a, quote, trans gamer girl. The man who shot up a nightclub in Colorado in this past November and murdered five people identified as non-binary. And now this. And there could be more. And Tifa has announced this coming Saturday is the, quote, trans day of vengeance. Vengeance for what? That's not explained. But the suggestion is there will be violence in Washington this weekend. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeted about this today, because if there's a day of vengeance coming, the rest of us should probably know about it. And for doing so, immediately had her, had her official congressional Twitter account suspended. You're not supposed to talk about any of this, apparently. And the authorities in Nashville certainly are not planning to talk about it. They're doing their best not to. Here's the police chief of Nashville explaining that, well, he's happy to talk about the shooter's guns. He's not going to tell you anything about the shooter's motives. So in the manifesto, there's several different writings about other locations. Uh, there were locations, of, uh, there was... Uh, talks about um, the school. There was a map of the school, a drawing of how uh, potentially she would enter and the assaults that would take place. Quite a bit of uh, writing to it. I have not read the whole, the entire manifesto. Our team and the FBI have been working uh, on this. Well, that's interesting. Within what seemed like minutes, we saw pictures of the rifles and the pistol. We now have horrifying body cam footage from within the school, so unsettling, we're not going to show it to you. But somehow we can't see the manifesto in which the killer explains why she killed. Why is that? It's not accidental. Well, you know exactly why it is. Because it would make the obvious undeniable. The trans movement is targeting Christians, including with violence. Most Christian leaders in this country don't want to admit that. Admitting it might force them to take deeply unfashionable positions. But it is true, and anyone who's paying attention knows that it's true. And so, like most true things at this point, it is officially suppressed. Here, for example, is Joe Biden yelping again about how it's all your fault when these tragedies happen because you've got guns at home. We have to do more to stop gun violence. It's ripping our communities apart, ripping the soul of this nation, ripping the very soul of the nation. And we, we have to do more to protect our schools so they aren't turned into prisons. You know, uh, the shooter in this situation reported we had two assault weapons and a pistol, two AK-47. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. So we're going to prevent you from learning why the shooter did it. And we don't have to guess because she wrote a whole manifesto about why she did it. And we know that she did that because she told a friend of hers on Instagram that she did it. But we can't see it 
we can only talk about the guns. We can't know what kind of drugs she was taking, what kind of hormones or SSRIs or benzodiazepines. We can only guess. We can only talk about the guns. Pass my assault weapons ban. That'll fix the problem. But Joe Biden is lying about that. He knows that he's lying, and you know that he's lying. Yesterday's massacre did not happen because of lax gun laws. Yesterday's massacre happened because of a deranged and demonic ideology that is infecting this country with the encouragement of people like Joe Biden. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake and then many will be offended, will betray one another and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. Do you plan on opening a hate crime investigation for the targeting of Christians? Um, FBI and ATF are both uh, on the scene working with the um, uh, local police. Uh, as of now, motive hasn't been identified. And if I seem to be seething with anger after watching that, well, good, because to say we don't have a motive when the police have said repeatedly that this shooter who happened to be trans specifically targeted a Christian school that apparently she resented. How does Merrick Garland testify before Congress saying that? He's not a dumb person. He's a smart person. So what is going on here? Joining me now, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, who's looking to do something about this. Senator, your reaction to Garland. We need to call this what it is, Laura. When you target somebody based on their religious beliefs and their religious affiliation, it's a hate crime. Police in Nashville have said this school was targeted. It wasn't random. It wasn't happenstance. No, they were targeted. That is a federal hate crime. There should be a federal hate crime investigation. Federal government should make all of its resources available to Nashville police. We need to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. And to do that, Laura, we need to know how it happened now. We need to know the kind of hateful rhetoric that led to this. We need to know what the influences on this shooter were. And we need to be clear about the truth here. When you target Christians, you target religious believers, that's a hate crime. Senator, you were actually mentioned at the White House today, and I couldn't believe how Biden reacted. Watch. Sir, do you believe that Christians were targeted in the Nashville school shooting? Do you believe that Christians were targeted? I, I have no idea. Josh Hawley believes they were. What do you say to that? Well, I probably don't then. <laughs> probably don't then. No, I'm not no, I have no idea. I'm sorry, but that is just a terrible response, Senator. Your response to the president, he heard that you were for something, oh, the guy was going to bring the country together. You were, you believe something, and so because you believed it, he said, oh, no, I changed my mind. And it, oh, I'm just joking. Is he? Yeah, I don't think so. I would just say, Laura, that that is totally beneath the dignity of the office of the presidency of the United States. This is a guy, this is an office that has the responsibility of leading this country. Children are dead. And can I just say to the parents out there, that words don't begin to express the loss that you must be feeling. And as a parent myself, of three small kids, I can't imagine. I know that these parents, as, as believers know, that we don't grieve as those without hope, that we look forward to 
to the day when these kids are raised again. But listen, this is a terrible, terrible tragedy. Biden should be acknowledging the targeting of people of faith. He should be saluting the law enforcement officers who put their lives on the line and saved hundreds of kids. He should be saying, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to call it for what it is, a hate crime. And we're going to do a full investigation to make sure it doesn't happen again. We need to get to the bottom of who is behind this push to, in many cases, mutilate these children without telling them what's actually going on. And all of this goes back to the fact, Laura, we've got to get the facts here in this shooting. We've got to prevent this from happening again. We've got to tell the truth about what happened in Nashville. During the end times, the Bible says that wickedness and evil will run rampant all over the world. Jesus warned that by resisting these things that Christians would be hated by all nations. Jesus said the world hated him first so that we should expect that the world will hate us as well. Satan isn't masking his intentions anymore, is he? Battle lines are being drawn and people are choosing sides. If you know someone who doesn't know the Lord, tell them time is definitely running out for them to come to Jesus. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. A good indicator we are living in the last moments of human history is that Satan has infiltrated our society in every way possible. We must understand Satan hates us because we are created in the image of Almighty God. Satan wants not only to be like God, but wants to exalt himself above God, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Satan has worked his way onto the TV screen, where he is portrayed as a fun and caring guy on the path of redemption, where women love him and men want to be him. To be a Christian today is to rebel against these vices and to speak out against the highly weird experience that is beginning to invade almost every aspect of our lives and society. Satan is busy deceiving mankind and mankind is falling for his deceptions. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Make no mistake about Satan. There is no redemption for him. His fate has been sealed, as we read in Revelation 20:10. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wants to take as many people to hell with him as possible. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We reached out to that professor, talked briefly on the phone. When I introduced myself, he immediately said he has no comment. We learned Monday afternoon that he has been suspended. It was this post that has the English professor at Wayne State University off the job, at least for now. On Stephen Shaviro's personal Facebook page this month, the professor, philosopher, and writer addressed right-wing speakers being allowed to speak on university campuses, starting with, so he here is what I think about free speech on campus. Shaviro writes in part, quote, although I do not advocate violating federal and state criminal codes, I think it is far more admirable to kill a racist, homophobic, or transphobic speaker than it is to shout them down. His post caught the attention of Wayne State University President Dr. M. Roy Wilson, who took action, releasing this statement that said in part, we have on many occasions defended the right of free speech guaranteed by the amendment to the U.S. Constitution, but we feel this post far exceeds the bounds of reasonable or protected speech. It is at best morally reprehensible and at worst criminal. President Wilson says they have referred the post to police for further investigation. Whether the secularists and progressives know it or not, they are of their father the devil. John 8 44. You are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it.
The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. When we read the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 24 through 32, there are three phases of judgment God uses on a society that no longer believes in Him or His ways. The first phase of judgment is an impure heart, as we read in verse 24. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts. The second phase of judgment is sexual lust, resulting in homosexuality as we read in verses 26 and 27. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving themselves the penalty of their error which was due. The third phase of judgment is a debased mind, resulting in all kinds of evil, as we read in verses 29 through 32. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. There can be no doubt we are living in the end times right before Jesus Christ returns as we link 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 with Romans 1, 28 through 32. If we are that close to Jesus' return, then how close are we to the rapture of the church? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.